Yeah, 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 the fanatic, but we keep it 100, keep it real, that's the only way we know how to be, talking that sports talk, you know what I'm saying, straight out of South Carolina, upstate, yeah. eight, six, four. yeah, the F-A-N-A-T-T-I-C, the fanatic, where we keep it OG, we talking sports, so I call it. Welcome into the fanatic, sports channel for sports fans, by a sports fan, it's your guy, Coach I. All right, man, we're here for Oklahoma, Nebraska preview. I got a very special guest in here today. We got Jamie Pritchard from the Air Raid Attack podcast. What's going on, Jamie? Coach, I thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be on. I'm always excited when Nebraska and OU play. It's part of my, you know, <laughs> growing up experience, really, within college football. So, um, you know, back in the day, big eight, baby. <laughs> That's right. All the way back to the Big 8, then the Big 12, and then Nebraska went up and joined the Big 10 and messed up the whole thing <laughs> until last year. We did. <laughs> so so you grew up in Nebraska? I did. Born and raised. Yep. Lived here oh, all my man. life. My parents have lived here all their lives. So it's in my DNA. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, on to what everybody's probably going to want to know. Start the show out, man. How you feeling about Scott Frost being fired? You know, it was a long, it, it was coming. I think a lot of us fans, we all wanted it to work out, obviously, for mm -hmm. obvious reasons. Um, it just didn't. You know, I don't, and I don't know that anybody could have really, I don't know if anybody really could have predicted that this is how it was going to go down. You know what I mean? I just... You thought that, you know, everything seemed to line up so perfectly for him coming back to Nebraska and being the guy and getting Nebraska going again. And it just, it didn't transpire that way. And, um, I, you know, I, I'd resigned myself. I'd prepared last year for it to happen. Okay. I think that Trev did the right thing in giving him the opportunity to get a new offensive staff and see, you know, what we could do with a new, with kind of some new offensive um, schemes and mindsets and yeah. things of that nature. So I think, I think that was right. I think that was the right thing to do. Um, I think Scott's loyalty in the long run maybe cost him yeah. his coaching career. Um, you know, Shenander came from UCF um, along with a lot of, obviously his offensive staff also came from UCF mm -hmm. and was initially hired. Um, but you can't, you can't keep a coach that can't be, that struggles against North Dakota and then, <laughs> and then loses to Georgia Southern at home. And this is, look, this is not a knock on Georgia Southern. No. I actually believe they were a very good football team. They, they played it. They played very well. They played sound football. They knew what they were good at and they executed. Mm -hmm. Um, I take nothing away mm -hmm. from, from Georgia Southern. It's not, it's not like that. A lot of teams a lot of teams struggled with Sun Belt teams. Yeah, uh, so, obviously. So <laughs> um, I, I take take nothing away from him, but here's the thing: like, that's it, Nebraska used to be unbeatable at home. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, you, you used to go into Nebraska and be like, probably not going to get a win because we're tough. We're tough at home, yep. and it just hasn't been like that. Um, and to lose the way we did at home. It was time, and a lot of people were like, well, "Why didn't you wait till October 1st? Because that's what I was going to ask you. That's that's why I was going to wait. That's what I was going to ask you. I was shocked. I told people, I was like, I, I I doubt I doubt we'll see anything happen before October 1st. I remember you telling me that when I came on your show. <laughs> Man, I was so wrong. Um, and I'll admit it when I'm wrong. I think a lot of us were wrong, though. I don't think yeah. that. I think there was a lot of people shocked that that happened yesterday. Um, yeah. But, you know. Hey, Trev yeah. had to do, he had to do what he had to do. I mean, at some point, like you say, there's never a right time, you know what I'm saying, to fire somebody. I know everybody's like 19 more days, you could have saved seven and a half million. But one thing you definitely want to do is you want to go ahead and start that coaching search because whoever you get has got to come in and try to save or gain on some recruiting. Recruiting will be here before, you know, a December, whatever it is, the first Wednesday in December mm -hmm. uh, and then February. But so a lot of times, you know, schools wait too long. You know what I'm saying? They wait yeah. and then that, 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 that puts a lot on that next coach. So. Uh, hopefully they'll have a little bit of that, uh, LSU in them last year when they let, um, Orgeron go, 
they actually won a couple of, you know, most of, like, I think they had, like, three games left, and they won two out of three. So, yep. who knows? Maybe the players will be charged up for the uh, the guy that's taking over interim. Um, I know he's – is he a candidate, the, the assistant coach? Is he a candidate for the head coaching job? Yeah, he is. Absolutely. I mean, even Trev said this is kind of your your interview, you know. See what okay. you can do, basically. I mean, he's he said, yes, we're going to do a nationwide search, obviously. What co- I mean, what athletic director wouldn't. Yeah. Do that. Um, yeah, he did. He said that. Um, absolutely. You know, I've heard and I don't know if these are rumors or anything. I don't know that I've ever heard Mickey in particular say he's not interested in being a head coach. OK, I've heard that that he's not really interested yeah. um, and some guys aren't. And that's totally fine. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny, though. It It's almost you can't sometimes you can't write these storylines. Right. So. <laughs> OU is actually the team that ended Mickey's football career. Oh. <laughs> Two years ago, I saw it on I saw it on a post today. So it's kind of like, you know, sometimes everything comes full circle and here's his opportunity to, to be OU and, you know. Hey, listen, he might be able to rile the troops up, man. And like you say, you got OU coming in, man. And you grew up in Nebraska, a Nebraska fan, so you know all about the Oklahoma-Nebraska rivalry. I know a lot of the younger generation don't because they stopped playing in 2010 because of the, yep. the conference. But uh, talk about a little bit about uh, how it was growing up and, uh, you know, waiting on that OU game versus Nebraska every year. Well, I mean, it, it- – it was tradition, right? You know, we'd all gather around with our families around our TVs and, and we'd wait, you know, and we'd, we'd see it basically whoever won that game was typically going to the national championship. You're you know, right. So You're right. Basically, <laughs> it was basically you win that game, you go play in a national title. And that's just the way it was. And, and I just remember the, you know, oranges being thrown on the field and <laughs> all the, you know, all the, you know, the jabs going back and forth, but, the thing I always remember the most is, you know, we loved OU. We loved that rivalry. We didn't, I don't ever remember having a, like an ill will, you know, towards, you. towards Iowa or, or towards Iowa. I do towards <laughs> Iowa. I misspoke. I absolutely do towards Iowa. I don't towards <laughs> OU though. Um, and yeah. it's funny because it was always such a battle. Yeah. And but it was fun. And I think the fans, because of our traditions, we just, both programs are so storied and have been for so long. And there's just that mutual respect there. Um, yeah. A lot of core values, I also believe, are very, very similar between yeah. OU and Nebraska fans. Yeah, um, you guys, you guys own the 90s and then they own the 2000s. And then it's like, you guys gave them a good game last year in Norman that I don't think a lot of people uh, saw coming. You know what I'm saying? Because of Scott Frost's history and because Riley has been had been doing so good. But you guys gave him a good game uh, last year, which which coming into the season is why I asked you. I was like, man, we got to do the Oklahoma Nebraska game, and it's like then you know Scott Frost calls the onside kick, fans start getting up in arms, then they lose, the, and it's like. But I think this, this honestly, I don't know if that's what Trevor wanted to do, but it, it could help. I mean, you need looking for anything at this point, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be the first time a you know interim head coach comes in and just tears it up, right? I mean, it would not be it would not be a surprise at all. I worry. Yeah. I am very concerned about our defense. Um, our defense is our defense was one of the reasons why we did so well last year. And, yeah. and in, you know, going to OU last year, I mean, we, we held a, a lot of that was, was on the defense. So, but this year it's different. Um, you know, there's no reason you score 42 points at home. And don't win. <laughs> and don't win. Yeah. You know, it, the, the defense was, was not good and it's, it's, it's concerning. And I just don't, I don't care who you are. I, I'm not even sure Bill of, Bill Belichick or Nick Saban himself <laughs> could turn that defense around that quickly. Um, and that's saying a lot considering OU's bringing in a pretty, you know, I would say explosive offense. Um, I watched, you know, now granted they haven't played, you know, the, you, know you know, any Power 5 teams. They played UTEP and they played Kent, Kent State. Now the Kent State game surprisingly was seven to three Oklahoma at halftime. So Kent I State, I, I'm almost positive that he'll the coach in Nebraska will be watching a lot of Kent State film. 
because uh, there's not a lot to watch on like a, a Brent Venables co- head coach team. You can watch some Jeff Lebby offenses, you know, from the past. Right. Uh, watching the, those games, though, I can tell you one thing. One weakness I would see in Dylan Gabriel is he always wants the big play. Like, I'm yes. watching the UTEP game, and there's several times where he overshot the guy, but uh, there was a check down like seven yards away from the line. I'm like, bro, just check it down to the tight end. Just check it down to the tight yeah, end. Right. No, he wants the big play. Now, he has the arm to do it, and, and uh, he definitely got the receivers with uh, Theo Weiss and uh, Mims. Uh, <laughs> so they lost a lot of players, but they still have a lot of talent. Now, on the other side, you guys uh, have a lot. You know, you're, you have um, Isaiah – I don't want to mispronounce his name. Uh, <laughs> the wide receiver. He's, oh, he has a, the high, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, him and Palmer. So yeah. – uh, you guys have some stuff too, so I think it's gonna have to be where you guys go. I'm thinking you're gonna have to score more than try yes. to stop Oklahoma. What you think? Yes, I, I I actually see this as a complete, I guess, Big Twelve game if you want to call it. Like <laughs> whoever scores the most points is going to win this game. Traditional I, I Big Twelve. <laughs> that's what's going to happen in this football game, and I'll watch. We'll both be wrong, and it'll be a complete defensive battle. <laughs> 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 definitely, right. definitely. I think. I mean, I just not thinking the, the way you, you know, you summed up the defense for Nebraska pretty good. They haven't been able to stop, you know, a lot. And um, I think if they want to have a chance, they're gonna have to put up some points. But the good thing is, if you look at the averages for Nebraska, their their uh, their defense hasn't been great, but they've been gaining as many yards as they've given up. You know, almost yeah. to the T. You know, what I mean, rushing. I think it's around uh, Nebraska gives up about 207 and they gain about 203 and then passing is about the same, like a little bit over 300 and (laughs) giving up a little bit over 300. Yeah, so uh, I think if they can come in there again, um, not to mention in the UTEP game, uh, you know, Oklahoma jumped out to a 21-0 lead and then UTEP came back in the second. That was in the first quarter and in the second quarter, they gave up 10 straight points. So... It's not that you uh, oh you can't be scored on. So I think if Nebraska wants a chance, they're gonna have to put some points up. So yeah. how you feeling about Casey Thompson this year? I mean, uh, he's he's kind of doing decent, right? I think Casey's been great. To be okay. honest with you, I really do. I I've been very impressed with him. He he makes and this isn't. I'm not trying to knock on Adrian or anything like that. But the things that I see different is Casey makes quicker decisions. Okay. I mean, he makes a decision and it's there. He doesn't yeah. He doesn't hesitate. I don't see a lot of like, oh, should I do this? Oh, should I do that? And he doesn't just rely on his legs. He can. He can yeah. rely on his leg. He scored, he scored, you know, a few rushing touchdowns already. Mm-hmm. Um, so he can, but he definitely passes first and thinks run second. And Adrian was the opposite. So I, I do like that. And that's good because we are utilizing the talent we have at wide receiver now with Trey Palmer, with Washington, with Isaiah Garcia Castaneda, with Elante Brown. Um, mm-hmm. we, you know, we've got a lot of really, really talented guys at wide receiver. Um, and Omar Manning should be fully good to go now. Um, yep. Kind of held him back a little bit. So you haven't seen a lot of him yet. But, you know, he was kind of coming back from an injury over the summer. And then he did have a concussion. So they've kind of pulled him back quite a bit. Um, but then, Anthony, then we have our running backs. Anthony, I was about to say, Anthony Grant's been playing great. <laughs> I mean, fair, and I, you saw it in the spring game, but you just don't know because it's a spring game. Yeah. Um, but he's special. He's special back. He um, He's definitely going to be a next level guy. He, oh yeah, for sure. That, yeah, he's that good. And then true freshman AJ Allen. I mean, yes, <laughs> he needs to bulk up. But man, he's he's good. He's very very good as well. And see, um, coming into the year, I had a lot of kind of hope. I was thinking Nebraska was going to go like I know y'all lost a lot of you know one point games last year, three and nine. I was like, I think you could possibly see the biggest turnaround you've seen in a while, like go eight and four maybe. You know what I'm saying? Because. I was like, they got a lot of offensive weapons, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and the that's offense why it's, is not the problem. No, yeah. it's, as you stated before, it's definitely not the problem. So, it's the defense. Yeah. So, now we're I young think, on defense. I, I will say this. We are very young on defense. We lost we lost the heart of our, our defensive line, and that has really killed us. And we lost yeah. our linebackers. So, you know, you, you, you take those pieces into consideration. The entire secondary is new. 
Um, mm-hmm. The only one that played in the secondary was Farmer and Newsom, and that's it. The rest yeah. of them, and, and they didn't, Newsom did play. Farmer didn't play all the time because we still had Williams and Dismuke back there. Yeah. So you, you can see the inexperience because, you know, you see a lot of missed assignments making the wrong reads. Uh, like, I mean, I noticed that in the Northwestern game a couple of times. It wasn't that yep. Northwestern just drew up a great play. It's like the safety or the linebacker, you know, came up when they should have been dropping back or vice versa. So that comes with the experience, though. So, I mean, again, this is – on the surface, you would think, okay, just fired your coach. You got Oklahoma coming in. You said that the defensive line isn't that good. Eric Gray, the running back from Oklahoma, was put on more muscle, so he's looking all physical. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's almost like a recipe for disaster. But these are these I'm telling you, these are those situations where you have a closer game than everybody expects you to. Now, I mean, like you said, we could be wrong, or you could come in there and boat race Nebraska for all we know. But I think it's actually going to be closer. <laughs> Well, listen, they got y'all as a 13 and a half point underdog. So, I is mean, that what is that now? It's been it's been anywhere between seven and a half, eleven and a half, and now it's at 13 and a half. Now it's at 13 and a half. As, as of yesterday, I think it was. I, I checked it and it was at 13 and a half. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You know, no. It's, you know, it is still at Memorial Stadium. It is still it is. in London, And there is still something to be said about a home crowd. Um, and I know you, oh, you, I know OU fans travel well, obviously. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. Um, so I know that there's going to be a lot of OU in the stadium. But I mean, Husker fans show up. Regardless of what's going on, we show up to support our teams. Um, that's just who we are. We don't know how to do it any differently. And um, I hope that it's a good football game. You yeah. know, it's going to be, it's going to be challenging to win the football game just just because of what I've seen on defense. And I, I hate to go back to that, but <laughs> I just I, I just don't have a lot of faith that things are just going to magically change. Yeah. Uh, I just don't. I, I mean, our pass rushers are great. It's yeah. that interior. It's that interior and our linebackers that are just, they're which, not getting the job done. Which is where good teams always start in the trenches, yep. whether it's O line or the D line and the middle and, and the inside linebackers. I always tell people you gotta be good in the middle, regardless of what kind of scheme you run on defense yep. or offense. If you're not good in the middle, eventually it will get exposed. So yep. all right, so you know the line, you know where it's at, you know the situation. We're gonna get you on camera, tell us what you think the prediction, what is what's the score gonna be? Um I'm going to go cuz because I think this is going to be high scoring. Um I think it probably ends up I'll say 45 38 somewhere in that somewhere in that somewhere in that range and I I honest I think OU is probably going to win the football game. I hope yeah. I'm wrong. I really would like to be proved I would really like to be proven wrong on this, but I think OU probably wins the game. What's crazy is when I did the Oklahoma season preview with your co-host, Mike, listen, Mike actually said that OU would, he's an OU fan, but he said at the beginning of the season now, this is before anything transpired, he said that OU would lose this game. Uh, and I don't know if I agree with it. I don't think I did at that time, but I do think you're right. I think OU will win, and it will be some scoring in this game. Uh, I don't have it as high as you, but I think I'm going to go 38-24 OU. I think, but I think one of those that that last touchdown will probably come, you know, kind of to seal the deal. Where it's mm-hmm. it, it's more like a thirty-one twenty-four in the third, fourth quarter, and then oh, you'll get another one. So I just it's it's gonna probably, be. I think we'll probably do something stupid. <laughs> I think they gotta come out. Being, if that helps, I, <laughs> I hate I, talking negatively about my team, but I'm I'm also a realistic person. I'm yeah. not like a I'm not a Nebraska homer. I am in some ways, but. I, I do like to be fairly realistic about about things. Well, like you said, it is at Nebraska. Home crowds always show up. I think you guys sell out like every game. Hey, if the student section is as loud as they was at the end of the game chanting Fire Frost, uh, then it'll yeah. – <laughs> hey, listen, they showed up to do that. They'll show up for the new guy. And know. I think I 
I think I saw you uh, tweet or retweet something about them trying to wear like a blackout or something like that. So who knows? Yep. Maybe it's some energy in the stadium. I think the kids, the players come out with their hair on fire. Maybe it's tied up at halftime and then oh, you just kind of, like I say, pulls away because of that inexperience yep. on defense. So before yep. we get out we of here, Jamie. We don't have a good depth. We don't, I don't yeah. think we have enough depth. That and that that hurts too. Like you got like the guys that are playing are inexperienced, and then behind them it's like no experience. It's like like you got a guy that's probably played two or three games, and then you got some guys that's like straight out of high school or you know a transfer or somewhere like that. So, yeah. well, go ahead and tell everybody how to find you, Jamie, on all the social media platforms and your podcast. Um, so I am a co-host of the Air Raid Attack uh, podcast, which is on um, we are on Twitter. Um, and then my Twitter is at J L Pritchard, P R I T C H A R D 11. Um, that's my Twitter handle or queen Jamie. You don't have to call me queen. It's that's a long story, but, <laughs> um, and then I don't really do Instagram or Facebook. I have Facebook, but it's, you know, for my family. So, yeah. So no, y'all go out there and check it out. It's a good podcast. It's interesting, interesting, uh, interestingly enough. Her co-host, like I said, is an Oklahoma fan. So you got Oklahoma and Nebraska. Have, are you guys going to talk the game this Wednesday? Yep, we are. We will be recording on Wednesday, and then it'll come out on Thursday. So absolutely, we will definitely be talking about it. And you know, Coach, I, I would have said the same thing. I would have thought that I would have thought going into the season that oh, that Nebraska might win this game. Yeah. Um, uh, but like, you know, you just never know going into hey. the season what happen. So. But I think you're right about the other thing I wanted to mention is, you know, we had to stop the bleeding. Um, uh, we, got, we, got recruits, we have recruits coming in. You know, we we don't want we don't want to we don't want players transferring out that we have currently. Um, That's a good know, point. <laughs> we, we it needed to be done to to try to salvage the rest of this season and then moving forward as well. That's a good point. You definitely want to stop the bleeding because if you keep continue on, if you have some commits in 2023 that are already, I mean, people that are already committed, we they do. may decide to change your mind. At least with a new coach, they could, you know, say, hey, new coach, new scheme, new attitude. We're going to fix these problems. And yes. now it just becomes, are you a good salesman? You know what I'm saying? With the, yeah. For the head coach. So hopefully things turn around. I'm hoping for a good game. This is the big noon game on Fox. Uh, I Listen. Yes. Fox always puts these games on the the big game on noontime. I get it. They don't want to compete with the other channels or whatever. It's for yeah. for a Southern football fan. We don't want games at noon, man. Make this game a night game in Nebraska, you know? It should be a night game <laughs> in Lincoln, Nebraska, or in Norman. It should it, this game either way. Should be a night game. Like, exactly. It's like the Red River rivalry. You yeah, know, every year. Game. Come on, people. <laughs> every year. So I'm like as a football fan, I like the night games, but I know coaches like those noon games so they can go ahead and get it over with. So <laughs> <laughs> I kind of feel that way too sometimes. I'm like, eh, let's just get it over with. But then it kind of ruins the rest of my day sometimes. So Exactly. So we appreciate you coming on, Jamie, uh, you. to the Fan Attic. We hope to have you back. You are our first female previewer. We've oh. had athlete, we've had female athletes on, but you are our first female preview and I thank you for taking the time thank to you. come on here. For Jamie Pritchard and the Air Raid Attack oh, no. Podcast, it's Coach I, the fan addict. We out. Got it jumping like it's that valley. Yeah. I call yeah. my dogs out the pound. Let's go eat. Turn on the fan addict. Yeah. Let's have a debate. Yeah. Who really hold down the southeast from state to state? What team hungry gonna eat everything up off they plate?